Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. I hope you are enjoying our coverage of the governorship election in Nigeria today. We are now pleased to have an African historian, an associate professor of history, African history at Vanderbilt University here in the United States joining us. He is the author of many books, the latest of which is Africa in Fragments, Professor Moses Ochono. Professor Chano, welcome to Sahara TV. Thanks for having me, Rudolph. Okay, let me start by um, asking you to help us understand uh, this current uh, election, uh, how it's playing out in the North Central. Uh, during the presidential election, the North Central is considered, uh, was considered the presidential uh, battleground zone. Uh, how is this zone shaping up in today's governorship election? Well, the North Central, you know, has uh, so many dynamics at play. Um, there are so many currents that uh, play a huge role in outcomes, in electoral outcomes in this region, because it's one of the most uh, ethnically and uh, ethnically diverse regions of Nigeria. Uh, it's also religiously volatile. Uh, so because of all these reasons, uh, what we want to see in today's election would be to what extent these factors play a role uh, in determining the outcome, in shaping voter behavior and voter choices. One would have thought that the religious factor and the ethnic factor would, uh, would loom larger in the presidential election. However, I think uh, the change momentum uh, seems to have uh, overwhelmed some of these uh, dynamics, some of these primordial dynamics. Uh, so the question, I think, would be to what extent these factors will resurface in today's uh, elections. Mm -hmm. So what, that's what, personally, I would like to see. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think the outcome of the presidential election will have an impact on this uh, local governorship and, and the House of Assembly elections? I think so, uh, ab absolutely. I'm interested, like most Nigerians, in seeing to what extent the, what I would call the Buhari factor, uh, plays a role in today's elections, in both the governorship and the House of Assembly elections. Because as you and I know, in Nigeria, people always want to align with the government in power at the, um, at the federal level, mm. given the, the fact that our country is essentially, you know, constitutionally we're a federation, but in practice, it's actually a unitary state with so much power and resources concentrated at the center. So the APC's victory, Buhari's victory at the center, uh, has created a huge momentum, I would say. In my state of Benue, uh, I'm from Benue, uh, the APC, I would say, it's safe to say, has the momentum going in, uh, coming into these elections. Uh, in several other states like Nasarawa, uh, Kogi, uh, even to some extent Plateau, the APC has made a huge, uh, uh, you know, since uh, uh, the APC, uh, the election two weeks ago, the Buhari factor has given the APC a lift, uh, a huge boost in this region. Uh, but to what extent that would translate into votes in today's elections, uh, we still don't know. But that's, that remains the question that's up in the air. That remains the relevant question that is going to be revealed when the outcome is announced. Mm -hmm. In your home state of Benue, uh, you, 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 your people once again returned David Mack to the Senate, but the PDP lost uh, at, at the federal level, that is the presidential election in the state. Now, uh, how is the governorship election playing uh, right now in Benue State? It's, it's one of the most complicated uh, you know, uh, elections, governorship elections in the country uh, because you have uh, the PDP uh, winning uh, the senatorial election in the zone C, in one of the senatorial zones, and then you have the APC winning the other two senatorial seats in, uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so going into these elections, uh, you have a divided state, but you also, but you have a situation where the APC has the momentum, has the upper hand, uh, seems, to have, seems to have been boosted by Buhari's victory. But not only that, the, there's another layer to this election, 
which is that the current governor, the, the PDP candidate is a godson, a protege of the current governor. The APC candidate is an ally, a protege, uh, someone who was handpicked by the Senate minority leader in the person of uh, Senator George Akumi, mm -hmm. who is uh, one of the leaders of the APC. So it's, it's going to be a battle between the political machines of the current governor and the former governor and the current uh, Senate minority leader. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also going to be a battle between their godsons. Uh, the one last thing I will say with regards to Benue is that since the election, the presidential elections two weeks ago, uh, there have been a massive uh, wave of uh, party switch or decamping, as we call it in Nigerian parlance, mm -hmm. from the PDP to the APC. Uh, with, with, with so many prominent uh, politicians like Colonel Lawrence Onoja, so many uh, notable names in Benue politics having crossed over from the PDP to the APC. Mm -hmm. uh, these people would uh, certainly mobilize a lot of support for the APC. So it's, it's one of the states to watch, I would say. It's one of the most complicated and most intriguing races in the country. Mm -hmm. Now, is ethnic uh, divide also playing any role in, in Benue State in between the main ethnic groups there? It might be a factor, uh, but I would say that in this particular, in the past, the, the ethnic, uh, ethnic tensions and ethnic considerations played a role uh, but in this particular elections, I haven't seen evidence that it's going to be a decisive factor, that the ethnic factor looms large over the elections or that it's going to play a decisive role. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, the party affiliations are, 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 are turning out to be uh, the most uh, prominent, the most decisive factors. Mm -hmm. But also, again, the Buhari factor, mm -hmm. the fact that you know, you have people in Benue State who are saying, well, you know, we, we, we want to align with the center. We want to align with this change movement that Buhari is the face of. Uh, but even in the part of the country of the state where David Mark was returned, the PDP, you know, candidate was returned, it, it, one never knows. Mm. In these elections, in, the, in today's elections, they may decide to switch. Mm. Uh, you know, yes, we voted for our brother, you know, we returned him to the Senate in the hope that uh, he might become Senate president again. But now, uh, you know, the local issues are going to determine this election. And we, we may see a change, we may see a shift, mm. even in that zone, mm. from the PDP to the APC. Mm. So one never knows how yeah. these things are going to shake out. Okay, let's go to Nasarawa State, where the former Minister of Information, uh, Mr. Labram Mako, is running as more like a third party candidate, uh, challenging the PDP and the APC candidates. Uh, what is at play in Nasarawa State, and do you think that um, Mako has any chance? Well, he, he does have a chance uh, to the extent that uh, if, um, you know, one, one never can gauge the depth and the, the breadth of the frustrations uh, that may exist out there with regards to the governorship or to the administration of uh, the incumbent governor, uh, Al-Makura, Tanko Al-Makura. Mm. Uh, so to that extent, he has a chance. But uh, one also have to bear in mind that the APC is very strong in Nasarawa, despite the fact that that state was won by... Uh, President Goodluck Jonathan uh, two weeks ago. The APC has a very strong foundation, has a very strong base uh, in Nasarawa State. Uh, also, one has to consider the fact that the PDP basically cratered, basically self-destructed in that state, mm -hmm. uh, factionalized, and Labara Maku left, uh, and is running basically as an independent candidate or as a third-party candidate, as you put it. Um, but also, there, there's, there's a huge... It's one of those states... Nasarawa is one of those states where you have a huge ethnic and religious undercurrent mm -hmm. that may play a huge role in the elections. There have been so many conflicts between uh, the Fulanese and, uh, you know, and, 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 and the Egon. Uh, the Egon are the single most populous ethnic group in the state, and that's Laboran Marcos' ethnic group. Mm -hmm. uh, but are they going to give him vote for him in block? Are they going to give him their block vote? That remains to be seen, mm -hmm. since uh, there's also a Solomon Ewuga who comes from the same place who doesn't see eye to eye with Labaran Maku. So that uh, ethnic block vote might be divided between, you know, who knows? And uh, Lab uh, Solomon Ewuga supports another uh, PDP candidate. Mm. He's still in the PDP. Mm. And then you have other ethnic groups as well, where they vote for Labaran Maku against uh, Almakura. And, uh, to, you know, so that just, there's just so many things, so many questions that are up in the air with regards to Nasarawa. 
uh, in today's elections. Mm. So now, now you are the author of the book "Colonialism by Proxy: uh, How Imperial Agents." Uh, and you touched on this issue and it's of concern to many people: the frequent conflicts between locals and uh, Afulani uh, headsmen. Did any of the candidates in the zone address this issue and offer any solution to, to the problem? No, I haven't seen uh, a well articulated, uh, you know, I haven't seen any serious engagements with the issue, not to talk of uh, well articulated uh, solutions or recommendations or prescriptions. Mm -hmm. I just haven't, it hasn't been a huge issue in these elections. I think these elections have been mostly about bread and butter issues, uh, survival, economy, jobs, unemployment. Uh, a few of the candidates in, in places like Plateau, where the ethnic and religious uh, tensions are particularly uh, quite uh, intense, uh, they, they, I think there have been some uh, muted exchanges that seem to touch on and allude to these ethnic and religious factors. Mm. Uh, but, but, I, but I haven't seen you know, a, a deliberate effort by any candidates or any of the political players in the region to make the conflict an issue. Mm. There seems to be this feeling that you know, let's get the elections over with. Let's go and vote for the best candidates, and let's hope that that candidate will, uh, will solve the problem. Mm. But I think it's one of the unknowns. One of, it, 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 despite the failure of the candidates to address the issue, it is one of the unknown factors that may play a role uh, in this election, especially in a place like Plateau, in places like Nasarawa especially, where the crisis has been particularly acute. Mm. In Benue, not so much. Not so much because... Uh, Benue is a majority Christian state, mm -hmm. uh, Christian majority state. Uh, if anything, if there's any factor that may play a factor a little bit, it's uh, the ethnic factor. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a huge issue in Benue as much as it is in Nasarawa and Plateau. Mm -hmm. uh, to some extent in Kogi. Mm. Now, let's touch on Niger because we are running out of time. Uh, what is going on in Niger states where the sitting governor lost uh, in his uh, campaign to go to the Senate. Um, is that going to be a factor for the people running for governor? The, the PDP is in trouble. It's in serious trouble in Niger. Uh, it has been troubled for a while. It has suffered a wave of uh, defections. Uh, the APC rank has uh, swollen. They, they have the momentum. They've been boosted by high-profile endorsements and, of course, by Buhari's victory. Uh, the, another problem for the APC is that the candidate they are presenting for the governorship is a protege of the current governor who failed in his senatorial bid. So if that's any indication, I think uh, it may just carry over. That aura of failure uh, and of, might carry over, might, might doom the PDP candidate. But, uh, but there's also another factor. The APC candidate is not particularly popular. It's not a very popular, he's been around for a while, he's from a wealthy family and so on and so forth. But it's not terribly popular either. The only thing I think that gives him an advantage, in my opinion, is the fact that the Niger as, at present leans APP, and uh, he's been endorsed by the you know the top hierarchy of the APC, and he's benefiting from as most APC candidates are from the aura of Buhari, from Buhari's uh, popularity mm. and appeal. So that may that may that may tilt the, um, the election in his favor. Mm. Now, one last question. Uh, in recent weeks or months, or maybe say years, you know, we've been hearing about Boko Haram uh, more as the conflict that Nigeria is facing. But we know that the North Central has the, the ethnic uh, problems that, that were going on in places like Plateau and uh, everywhere. Do you think that, that that issue has been solved or has it been overshadowed by the Boko Haram conflict? Uh, I, think, I think the latter. It has been overshadowed. Um, largely, you know, I think by the Boko Haram issue, because there's, there seems to be this uh, thinking uh, in many circles that Boko Haram is an existential threat to the entire country, mm. whereas the issue with the Fulanese and the, 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 the non-Muslim peoples of the Middle Belt, uh, places like Plateau and Nasrawa and Benue, uh, with those attacks to some extent Taraba as well and Kogi, whereas that issue is seen more as a local or regional issue mm. that does not pose an existential threat or a mortal threat to the to the fabric of the nation. Mm -hmm. So I think for that reason, uh, it hasn't enjoyed as much of the um, as much uh, space in the national discourse as the Boko Haram issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think that after these elections are over and things settle down, 
I think we're going to see uh, more engagement with it, especially now that hopefully Boko Haram is on the run and Boko Haram is being, uh, has been dealt a blow and uh, it's on its last legs, hopefully. Mm. If that's the case, if, that, if my assessment is correct, then I think we're going to see a return to you know, a situation where this crisis in the middle belt, this ongoing recurrent crisis, uh, begins to you know, get as much attention probably as uh, Boko Haram or at least gives the kind of attention that it deserves. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor Moses Ochano, for joining us. Thank you, Rudolf. Yeah. When we come back, we are going to continue uh, in our coverage of these elections for governors in Nigeria. So stay tuned. Hey, yo, man, what did it do? It's your boy, Young Moose. You watching Sahara TV, everything. Hey, girl.